Welcome Internet to a Psychologist's Casual View. And today we're going to talk about Ludwig Bingswanger, The Case of Susan Urban. Or Urban. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce it, so I'm just going to call her Susan from now on. And so what I liked a lot about it is that it was a very interesting read because basically in this book, Bingswanger is going to talk about Susan Urban, but also on existential analysis. At a time where it was not as codified or as streamlined it is now. What I mean by that is that he's not necessarily going to talk about the givens as Yalom might talk about them. He's not going to talk about May and the function of love. He's really the precursor, the one that starts it all. The, basically the founding father of existential psychology, which made it very exciting for me. However, I have to stretch this before we really talk about the book. This book is not an easy read by any stretch of the imagination. It's quite difficult. I got myself rereading certain passages like four or five times to really get the idea. And this is due to the fact that Bingswanger holds nothing back. And that's exciting, but it's also very hard, meaning that he, he is on an intellectual level very, very high. Like he's going to quote Heidegger, Freud... And he's not going to explain anything, really. He just basically puts them, like, in his reasoning and makes sense. And it's brilliantly explained. But if you don't know what those terms mean, it might be a bit complicated. And also, he doesn't write for the layman. Very clearly, he writes for the professional. And, little add in addition, the professional of the 1950s. Meaning that it's not even like us, the professionals of nowadays. It's really like a very specific breed of people who my extent do not exist any longer or are very, very min a minority. You, need, you have to have a very good understanding of psychiatry, psychopathology, existentialism, philosophy, uh, Greek literature, and a whole range of stuff to really get um, the meat of it. And I know bits and pieces of stuff, but I don't know all of it. So for me, it was not an easy read. However, it was a very interesting and very rewarding read, as it brings in very interesting ideas. One of the main things that I loved about this is that basically, it is a very, very in-depth analysis. Like, it's not like, you know, sometimes certain authors can just like banally throw something and say, well, that, that patient justifies my point of view. And you're like, oh yeah, okay, but don't have all the context. Here you have as much context as you could get, or at least as much as could be needed, as uh, basically it takes, I think, about half of the book for all the context to be told, so it's pretty much interesting. And what I liked about it is that we start from the point of view of dissecting, for the lack of a better word, or at least analyzing the case history of Susan Urban by Susan Urban herself, because she wrote not to Bingswanger, but to another doctor, a female doctor that she really liked, her life history. And through that life history, Bingswanger is going to try and analyze it. And what I find very refreshing is that he's not trying to say, oh, schizophrenia, because Susan Urban was basically diagnosed with schizophrenia, and it becomes very clear that she was delusional at certain points. And I'm not saying that as slander, it's just, that's what it is, psychopathologically, that's what we would call it, and that's how I'm going to call it. But it's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing. It's just what has happened to her. And he goes into the fact that instead of being like any author of that period of the 1950s, saying, oh, well, that's what's called the schizophrenia. He's like, I'm not interested in what caused it. That's not the point of my analysis. The point of my analysis is to see how her life, her existence, was impacted by the illness by what happened to her, and how both are intertwined. And it's not about discovering what makes someone a psychotic, but how the person experiences the psychosis, the phenomenology. And that's a very important one, because being like was 100% into that. And that's the phenomenology. is basically how people experience the world. And the idea is that there's no right and wrong way of experiencing things. We all experience things on a different scale. And that's the most important part of the book is basically we're not here to basically uh, take the case of Susan and make it a generality, make it true for everyone, like it could be the case for some other authors. We're here 
because Susan is Susan and we're basically going to talk about her and that's well he's going to talk about her we're going to read about her and that's what I found very enjoyable in the book is that Susan is a, is truly the center of it and basically Bing's van tries to make some kind of meaningful exercise in trying to understand her and you can really feel that in his writing even though it has a whole layer of intellectualization of quotes of stuff like that he really is adamant and I think I've never read something so passionate about a patient one just one patient and how it tries to not box her in in any boxes and what I loved about it is that even at the end when he talks about the diagnosis it's so open range and he's not saying oh it's this it's like there's those elements there's those elements she doesn't fit really in either or Basically, we went for that, but, I mean, it's only a vocabulary we use in psychiatry. And I find that great. He was able to take some perspective, some, like, hard dissecting science, and extract it, meaning that it's really human, really compelling. That being said, that book still remains kind of difficult, especially at, at the very end, where he has all the footnotes. And, I mean, at some point it becomes kind of ridiculous, because... Like, the footnotes are half of the page. And basically, what he's trying to do in that later half, and if you don't know about the jargon, jargon in psychiatry and psychology has changed immensely. And basically, you can it's really a testament to that. There are words we would not use anymore. He's using them, and he's dropping them all the time. And it was very funny, because I had encountered the reads through my studies, and those words... Like, for example, mania co-depressive, which typically we, we won't use. Or like, um, because I've read it in French, um, since like, um, psychose infantile, all of those things, like, we would not use anymore. Or monomaniac. Things like that have kind of fallen off the diagnostics, the diagnostic radar. And that's what I find also why I found it hard is that basically he's not thinking exactly with the same percepts as us. And don't get me wrong, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to just start with an author and just like embrace his way of seeing things when, when it's interesting. And that's what Susan Urban and her case history is interesting. Because basically it's the most fundamental attempt to try and understand someone. And perhaps also what I found wonderful is that it's an earnest attempt. It's not li like he tried anything. He talks about how basically the schizophrenia kicked in when there was too much pressure, that her whole world was collapsing, so to speak. He doesn't say that exactly outright, but that's the idea, that she's confronted against the terrifying, what he calls, at least in this French translation, le terrifiant, the, the real sense of terror, like it's gonna overwhelm the self of Susan Urban and that's how he sees things, is that she was overwhelmed because her husband was dying of cancer, her parents were di died, and so she, all that death, all the fact that her people she loved, cared for, were dying, and she couldn't control it, and that's basically the conditions, not the cause, the conditions in which it, schizophrenia started coming through. And what I also liked is that even though he knows psychoanalysis, is not overemphasizing that aspect. Because I feel that at least the authors of that time really tended to try and go into those things like the Oedipus complex, oral stage, anal stage. He doesn't really touch that. He really feels that basically the case of Susan Urban is much better explained for us and also for herself in a more phenomenology, turned more into her words, into what she really believed and felt, and that was great. And I think that basically also Bingswanger has a certain way of phrasing things, like for example, he talks about like a theater, an internal theater and an external theater, as if we were in Susan Urban, but also all of mankind, that's where he generalizes, but that's not in the psychopathological state that he generalizes, but that as a global sense that basically the world is a bit like a stage in which we play roles. And I found that vision, that metaphor, so great and wonderful that it kind of st stayed with me, even after reading this book. Like, 
it's true that when we think about our stories, our lives, there is that theatrical aspect to it. And what he's saying is that basically Susan Urban, because she was confronted with the terror, the terror of ceasing to, to be as herself, basically her theater of the world became like a caricature of what it should have been. Um, just like basically um, a moment where nothing was really meaningful and everything became out of touch, out of sync, uh, too much or too little. And basically her interactions, she was unable to interact in a proper setting with people, but she always tried to. And there's that, that moment where it struck me in the book, where basically she, the psychiatrist says, no, you're having delusional ideas. And she tells him, no, those are true ideas. And things then uh, goes into this, but not exactly how I'm going to go, because I'm going to go into another way. That basically what she's saying is that it's true for herself. She feels that they're not wrong, they're not lies, they're not anything, they're not misconceptions. That's what she feels at her core. And even though she feels persecuted, and even though there's no reality objectively to it, that's what she is. At that moment, she is persecuted. She does feel that. And I think that that was um, a wonderful state of being going a highlight in it. And it was completely true. I think that most people don't realize that having schizophrenia, having psychosis, having any mental issue, but those ones in particular, are um, states where people deny what you feel or just feel that it's uninteresting or that you just have to be kind of pushed in your place because it's wrong. And that's the whole problem, I feel, that those people don't get to voice their concerns or to voice, or people don't get to understand that that's truly what they feel. That's not an exaggeration. That's not pulling it too far, it's really what they are and who they are. And I found that that was wonderful with Binzanger because he gives the place for those people to be in those delusions without calling them out as pathological, but as a state of being into the world, what he calls a state of being into the world, which harkens back to Heidegger. But the idea is that it's not illness, it's a way that the person has to re react and is towards everything that's happening. And that's also a nice point of view, I feel, to not just necessarily see it as an illness that needs to be treated, but also as a very, very unique way of being into the world. However, there is a little something I kind of missed in this book, is that the fact that because she, my understanding, she wasn't a direct patient of Binswanger. There is no him-her interactions. And I felt that that was, I mean, I'm not going to say bad, but at least it was a little, though imagine in French was being disappointing. It was a little disappointing because I really would have liked to see how he handled her in a therapeutic setting, what he would have done, what, what methods he would have used. And because I think that they would have really, that book would have really gained something by presenting psychotherapy as Dingslinger would have done it. And I know it was not exactly his aim. His aim was really to try and understand the phenomenon of what Susan Urban experienced. But I really felt that it would have been really adding something to have those moments. Because I think that there is something to gain by all of his ideas being able to be applied with people. And that he says even himself at the end, that basically psychiatry needs psychoanalysis and phenomenology and seeing the person as a person and not as a set of symptoms to be able to grow. And that's exactly what happened. And unfortunately, nowadays with the simplification of everything, we tend to go back to all mental disorders as replacing a person, but it's not that people are not replaced by the disorders, they just have them. And even then, they have them in very specific ways. And it would be a mistake for anyone to think that because you have a mental disorder, it's always going to be the same as another mental disorder. Two schizophrenics can be very different. Two people with anxiety disorders can be very different. It's not like a copy of each other. And that's what he brings to the table. And I felt that that message was pretty great. Anyway, I feel that that covers it for the most part. And basically, 
this might be a, a last idea which I like and which I will share with you, is basically he has the idea of the terror. The terror is a state of being where, in which all humans are, how can I say, linked to it in a way. He says basically we're all neighbors to it and there is a sense of interestness. The terror is not necessarily schizophrenia or psychosis, but it's a state of complete fear for our lives. Fear, anxiety, and something massive, like, I, at least I picture it like that, like, um, like an abyss in which we all, how can I say, we can all potentially fall into. And I felt that that was very accurate and that no one is fully, how can I say, no one is fully protected from it and we all know what it is and we all basically spend our lives trying to avoid those states. And basically when people such as Susan fall into them, how it's important that someone is there, at least attempts to be there in order to help her out of that state. There's also the fact that strangely enough, and maybe for the better for her, things like her had no information about her once she left the asylum or the psychiatric hospital. And I think that that speaks volumes of basically how she would have felt because it's not uncommon for patients to give, to give news when things go well or to just, did you know what happened to them? The fact that she went for a radio silence, I think maybe it would not have ended too bad or too good rather for her. And I think that that might have been another thing that if Bing Wenger had engaged with psychotherapy, maybe things would have been a little different. But that's just me imagining. I mean, that's not... Maybe I'm completely wrong about this, so don't quote me on that. But I really found that the book was wonderful. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If there's anything you'd like to, um, to ask or if there's anything you would like to point out, please feel free to do so in the comments. So until next time... Take care. Bye.